And this fundamental solution comes with a few properties, right? So the first of these properties is that um, phi of x t, and this holds in, in Rn in general, is positive, okay? For all x in Rn, and as long as t is greater than zero, right? What is it? It's a positive function multiplied by another positive function. So it has to be positive everywhere. Phi of xt is also t infinity, okay? This is maybe a little bit less self-evident, okay? But essentially we can, we can differentiate this with respect to x as many times as we like and we're gonna have no discontinuity, okay? This is the incredible property of solution of the heat equation that we did not get in the case of the wave equation. And this is very important for proving things like, you know, uh, boundedness and smoothness of solutions, okay? When we move to, uh, you know, series solutions and things like this, okay? It has a, it has a, has a smoothing property, the, the, the heat equation or the diffusion operator. The other thing that we already sort of claimed in 1D, or we used it to get that prefactor in 1D, okay, but not necessarily in, in ND, is that um, the fundamental solution always integrates to one, okay? So, uh, so I'll I'll just I'll just remark on how to prove number three, right? We we talked about this before. So you take, let's say for n equals one, okay. You can integrate um, phi of x t dx, right? This is going to be your prefactor, okay, times this integral e to the minus x squared over 4kt dx, okay? We can make a change of variables, right? We can say y is equal to x over the square root of 4kt, and we get 1 over the square root of pi integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus y squared dy, okay? And then this integral, you can use the, the you know, polar coordinates trick uh, in order to compute it's the square root of pi. And so we get that this is equal to uh, one, okay? For n greater than one, okay? We can just use the fact that e to the minus magnitude of y squared is equal to e to the minus y1 squared, e to the minus y2 squared, and so on, e to the minus yn squared, okay? And, uh, and we can integrate each of those pieces separately, and we will end up that each of those is going to have a contribution of um, four, one over square root of four pi k in that case, okay? The C infinity property, okay, takes a little bit more work, okay. That's that's given in Shear and Levy, okay, but I won't uh, I won't go through that uh, uh, now just quite yet. I'll um, I'll go through it next uh, next lecture, okay. And uh, the first property, um, there's. Yeah, hopefully not a whole lot to go through in, in that case. That's just essentially um, noting that this is a positive function and, and this is a positive function, okay? away from zero. Because obviously it vanishes as, as, as t gets close to zero, okay? So you're saying it's c infinity with respect to x, but not, not, not necessarily t. Yeah, right. The, the only problem you have with respect to t is if you, if you take that limit as t goes to um, t goes to zero from above, um, so um, I mean it's not going to be uh, differentiable right at 
t equals zero, but as long as we cut out the point t equals zero, actually it'll be continuous both in t and in x, and we can show that. I'll, I'll, I'll go through that. On, on the next slide. Yeah, so it is, it is c infinity in t as well, okay. away from t equals zero. Okay. So let me, I just have a couple more minutes. Um, let me just uh, make a few more remarks. So first of all, um, this thing phi that we've derived, it is a probability density function, okay? It's really just a normal distribution, okay? The other thing is that um, this function phi, right? If I take its maximum over x, Let's do it in 1D, okay? This is going to go to zero as T goes to infinity. So remember this, this sort of smoothing operation, it's gonna smooth out over time, it's gonna spread out across the domain over time. Going back in the other direction though, phi diverges, okay? Basically as T goes to zero from above, okay? And, as you'd expect for something like a delta distribution, it's gonna vanish where t goes to zero from above um, for values of x not equal to zero, okay? Um, but the thing that we've left out so far is what about the initial condition, right? We didn't really incorporate the initial condition at all yet. Okay, and the point is that we did not consider this. This is not yet supposed to be the solution U, okay, to derive the fundamental solution. The way that you typically get solutions to the, the, the Cauchy problem uh, that, that's described by the heat equation is that you start with the fundamental solution and then you incorporate the initial condition in order to get the solution to your particular uh, initial value problem, okay? So what we have is we have a um, symmetric solution, okay? With phi of x t goes to the delta distribution, okay? As uh, t goes to zero from above. Now the advantage of this is that we can now take this fundamental solution and sort of weight it in the right way so that we recover the initial condition that we have for our particular Cauchy problem for any value of, of g of x, okay? And on Wednesday, we'll start with uh, doing that. And the general idea is that you can just, you can just convolve this initial condition uh, with your with your fundamental solution, okay? So what's coming over the next week is using the fundamental solution to derive the Cauchy problem, handling that in situations other than just having, you know, an unbounded domain minus infinity to infinity, okay? Show, 